In today's video, a bit of a prelude for you, is front suspension, how to change brake levers, simple carburetor, but obviously there's other videos for that one as well, why your lights dim when you brake, a little chat on the pistons and why they go and the basic reasons. Remember always to clean out the sump bit when you do it. But anyway, basics are there. And things you need to know about MOT. So I'll go through that one. Remember guys, MOTs aren't as scary as you think they are. Front and back wheel, front and rear brakes. Brake levers will fail the MOT. They've got to be whole, they can't be sharp. Lights, horn, indicators. And then you've got the rear bearings. Emissions doesn't mean a thing on these motorbikes. They're two Ts. So guys, if you want your bike to do this, remember always use quality 2T oil. That's the only advice I can give you. I don't mean the 20 pound stuff, but as I say, I've said it several times in the video, there's well over 50 videos on how to keep these running, all the parts and bits and bobs. Electric can be a bit more difficult to explain. Obviously this one's got a different barrel in this one, which you have to lock to get the key out. I don't mind them ones to be honest with you, but there's lots of helpful information on my other videos at the end of this video, you'll see them four here. If you're looking at your phone and said you're only going to get 100, there's 300 videos, admittedly some stuff you don't want to know about, like big bikes, but they're all handy hints on how to keep these little babies running. Guys, watch the video. Hello guys, back in my shed. What are we talking about today? It's got to be a speed fight, hasn't it? Had lots and lots of questions, guys. As I said, there's well over 50 videos on speed fights. Loads of videos on bits and bobs, NRGs, DNAs, Jaleras and so on. So have a look through. I know sometimes on the phone you can go back 100. If you've got an actual computer, you can pick videos, you can go right there back to nearly 300 videos. There's loads. Anyway, what's this one in for today? Can you hear that? There you go, look. Headstock slightly gone here, but this also rocking. What is that? Done it before, nice and easy to change. Basically, spring and inside's dampener, the dampener leaks, it goes, and what you get is the springiness. So you're riding down the road, you're doing this. Instant MOT failure. Next failure, there you can see it guys. But, gear lever, brand new one. This little baby, well, strange mirror. Starts, but only really on kickstart. I've had a lot of bikes do this previously where electric start works when they're warm, but if you leave them a little while, cut the three days, will not start. You have to kickstart it and they'll start. What is that problem? Well, I've got used to it on a lot of bikes. I say to people, if you're riding it every day, she'll love you. If you leave her a week or so, you've got to kickstart them. But the truth of the matter is, it is a static coil. Okay? And here's a lovely clean one I had before. <laughs> Basically, this is static coil. That's lovely and clean, except that tiny wash that shouldn't be there. <laughs> lovely and clean, these are lovely and clean, and that goes round. A static coil, that's the outside case, does more than just one thing, okay? This is the inside, and that does your electric for the bike. And on the outside, you may just see there, that little bit there. That's your timing, that's quite a small one. That's your timing, okay? That gets your bike going for the timing, right spark when you're going along. But the inside is all about electrics of your bike. They get shit on them, basically. Dust, grime, road dirt, water, all sorts. They get rusty and crappy. And then this doesn't make good connection anymore. Now, it still gives you connection, but not enough. And what you get is less power. That's why your lights are often dull. You never get really a great bit of power from it. And of course, because it's not pumping the power out, you're not getting a good enough spark. HT is not getting enough, uh, the coil's not getting enough, not going through to the coil. Basically, that's what it is. When you kickstart it, you're really pushing it around really fast, cut the free kicks and away she goes. Warms up and then it's halfway there, isn't it? But cold start on anything is always the hardest to do. So it comes with battery across and around. And that's it really. Now, you can put up with it, it's not a hard job. There's other video on there about static coil, how to get it off in a special tool, always in my top drawer. Do look at my videos, guys, before asking questions. They are there, okay? One I'm getting often asked, another guy asked me recently, about a piston. And basically, it failed, he changed it, and he started messing around again. It worked a while, and then went again, what could it be? And I said, piston. He said, well, I've changed it. The truth of the matter is, pistons can fail for many, many reasons. When you change a piston, there could be still crap left in there, which this guy found out. A little bit of a ring was still in there, scored the piston, causes problems, tiny nickel on the top. 
have you fixed the real reason why it went in the first place? And again, that can be because you're doing 50, 60 miles an hour on these little things, not made for that really. And it could be because of that reason that the oil becomes more of a coolant than a lubricant and the piston fails. Um, you put a new piston in there, back to 50 miles an hour again, it should go again. Other reasons can be that you're using poor quality oil. Other reasons, and I've had some really bad pistons where, you know, the bearings from the bearings have fouled, gone up, bashed, smashed pieces absolutely everywhere. I suppose realistically, if you buy a bike that's already got a piston gone, try and find out why, ask the last owner, and don't just get, I tried in fine and it stopped. Try and find out what he did. If not, you know, you have to find out. The old pump could not be working properly. It was fitted incorrectly in the first place, and the bike can do, I don't know, six, 10,000 kilometers, whatever they are, miles, and uh, the piston fails just old. You put a brand new one in there and it fails really quickly. There are some cheap brand ones out there from China with like Chinese writing on them. They fail really, really quickly. I've had a couple of them fail, and I mean 10, 50 miles. They're rubbish. I'm not saying you have to pay for the expensive ones, but I am saying get a reasonable quality one from a quality eBayer, whatever country you're on, get a quality one. Um, it will save you a lot of hassle. Some of the rings, obviously, when you put the pistons down, they've got marks on top and bottom, some just close, and they're a bit finicky. Check my videos out for them, but they can be the reasons why the piston goes. Now, this little baby here runs. So what am I going to do to this one today? Well, I'm going to change this lever, change the suspension, clean the carburetor, and then I'm going to go to static coil and give that a look. I don't need to do static coil because probably after cleaning the old carburetor out, she may start in. But I know that's a fault and it's not that hard to do. Get the cover off, take the bit off and give it a quick clean. The benefits will be massive, especially for the person that's going to own this bike afterwards. So there you go. Let's get on with it as I say and see what it does. Changing the front shock couldn't be more easier. This black one was the original one. Very hard to test, but basically you put it on the floor and you can just push it and you can feel it just weak. The spring's really good on that, but the compression's gone. That's brilliant. Come on guys, how simple can this be? Two 16 mils for the top. You'll find up here, there's one bolt here, the nut on this side and the bolt on that side. Hold one side and undo it. And that simply slots out. Make sure it's in the center stand and make sure it falls back. If not, put some weight on the back, otherwise it will collapse. Remember that, not a biggie though. And then obviously the front one, 15 mil and 13 mil, and the bolt goes there. I mean, change the front shock almost seems <coughs> very, very simple. Gary to charge you an hour's labor for you, five minutes, maybe 10. All right, let's change this one now. That's that done, guys, okay? I know you can't see it with one arm, but now she's bringing it back up. Right, headstock, <coughs> it's under here, remember? Now, here's a good example of what I'm talking about. Put the bike on the stand, lift the front wheel off and watch. You can hear it. Can you see it moving? That will cause all sorts of silly little things. You get like a wobble. Um, also probably caused by the suspension anyway. But basically, really easy. You can get wiggling, you can get the back and forth when you're braking and all sorts of things. Must be done. This front panel has to come off and there's three nuts in here that I've shown many, many times before. And end of the day, it's not a big job, basically. So um, we'll get on with it. There, guys, see them there, them nuts there? They're the ones that need to push back, okay? So just in there. I'm having to really care for every panel I take off because every panel I take off, there is these little critters. And I mean, these are quite big, actually. Um, they're not happy with me. Obviously, this bike's been taken out. It's been a war down here. This little spider, the red spider, he just span him up there and it peed off of me. And I took this one off, and I mean, there was a ginormous one in there. So, uh, yes, I'm having to be a little more scared, but anyway. So, knock that top one back about half inch to an inch. Knock these two back around by about an inch and then put the top back down again. Test. You must be able to turn the steering wheel very, very nicely. Not like it is now where you get the wobble noise. So once again, annoying spiders, you can hear that. When I do this in a minute, you're not gonna, okay? So remember, knock the top nut back and the two that are together forwards, about a turn, and oh, about, um, sorry, a quarter of a half turn, put locking the back on and test. That's the only way of doing it. It must still be able to freely do that. If it's too much, wind it back. You can spray a bit of WD down it as well to help it. 
this this uh, face. Why am I doing that face? Cheap Chinese carburetor. Not a Peugeot speed fighter. Uh, anyway, don't do that. Drain the petrol out of it. Still connected because of the cut wire. I just don't like them carburetors. Find them hard to run. <clears throat> so that sort of worries me now that it's not starting because these carburetors don't run very well. And if someone has managed to get them running well, great. But here's an example, it doesn't. So I'm going to clean it up anyway, see what it's doing, and then uh, get back to that one. There's the brake lever all done. Yay. So that's brake lever done now. That's the headstock done, and that is suspension done. So the whole front's done. Let's carry on the carburetor. So, front brake, headstock, suspension, clean carburetor, kick start. Didn't have to expect that one. Kick it down, it stays down. So I've got to take that off. However, Okay, he changed the exhaust for a nice shiny one and he took the link pipe off, but he didn't. Can you see that? He didn't upjet it, okay? You need to upjet it, guys. If you've got a standard bike, standard exhaust, standard everything, um, taking the link pipe off will give you more airflow, brilliant. Putting an exhaust on will make more gases out, but you're still not putting more, gas, more, more petrol through. So I've upjetted it only by four, um, and I didn't kick it over immediately, I just did this. So that's pretty good. Have to see what your eyes like. So now, as you see, the light's crap. So static coil next. Actually, while I've got it this side, I'm going to take the um, engine case off and have a look at the belt, the rollers and that look, because it didn't sound like it geared up, so they could be square. So vary it off. Let's have a look. Check everything. Look at the rust. Can you see that? What would that do? Chew the belt up in minutes. That's got to come off. Spot what's wrong with this then? Look. That is just... That's wrong. Completely wrong. Bend it's alright. And that's the usual bit of spring there. But that belt, that would have been chewed up. And that is just... I've never seen that before. It looks like it's tightened it up, but it's wrong. So that means that the Rollers could be square, anything wrong with them. Right, let's get on with that then. So many bits in this video. There you go, clutch off. Not that good if I'm honest with you. Clean it all up. There we are, rollers. They are round, but very dirty. So give all that a clean. You have to have that little bit there to get the clutch off. This is no other real way of doing it, clamping it maybe. And then obviously the claw hammer which goes to said, claws in that way. Guys, watch the video, I'm not gonna go over that again and again and again and again, but there you go. That's off, that's off, clean all this up, get it all back on again. Right, about to put it back on, but you may notice this brand spanking new belt it is ever slightly wider than this one, but this was baggy as hell. Um, you'd be revving up before you pull away. This is nice and tight now, that is where it should be. And now I've just gotta tighten it up from doing that, because it shouldn't do that, and then work on that. Get on with it. And there we go guys, nice and easy. This wasn't too bad after all. Nice easy start now. Ripped up nicely. Job done. That's the static coil there, you need it up so guys can work a lot better now. All I've got now for her is some decals. But right, she lives up as she should, starts as she should. And, uh, Job done, guys. Please like, subscribe, check out my videos. There are 50, oh well over 50 now of these speed fights and other generic ones, mopeds, NRGs, and so on. So check them out.